Hi everyone, Daniel Brigham here. Over the last seven years or so, the use of rapid prototypes have become much more common when developing e-learning, and for good reason. You know, before you get too far down the road, you can show reviewers what content you're presenting, you can give the look and feel for how that content will be presented, and you can show how your learners are going to be assessed. So in this short post, I'll explain how I use Storyline 360 to create rapid prototype storyboards, and then give you a few tips. So here's a basic description of what I do. I'll mock up the layout of the slide using placeholder, or in this case, watermarked graphics. If there are animations on the slide, I'll usually include just a few to give the learners a feel for how that content's going to be presented. And in the notes panel that you see here, here's where I describe what's going on on the slide. And I try to use simple language when I'm describing this. So voiceover narration sync to images that fade in and off screen. And then I'll place the voiceover narration, usually at this rapid prototype stage, I have that narration script dialed in. Uh, if it's the case of a, you know interaction that's text only, say a, a tabs interaction or a slider interaction, you could place that text here as well. One settings tip before we review this, I'll open the slide properties here. A little counterintuitive, but I will deselect the menu and then select the notes tab. That way, What's in the notes tab, the really important stuff that's in the notes tab will always be present to your learner. So let's just preview this slide real quick. So you see a few animations, watermarked images, and then the notes panel will always be present so the reviewers can see what's going on. All right, let's talk about interactions now and then I'll preview this whole project. For the interactions, I try to develop one interaction and I, I will fully build it out. And it's really a rhetorical strategy. You know, some of these rapid prototypes can seem kind of, you know, half built or shell like. I found that if I build out one of these interactions in its entirety, the reviewers are like, okay, he knows what he's doing. Eventually, this is going to look really good. So that's a rhetorical strategy there. I want to talk about quiz questions next. So basically, I build out as many assessment activities as I have time for. For one, it's usually text-based and pretty quick to build these out. And two, reviewers are interested in how learners are being assessed. And I would say, especially if you're assessing them in a slightly different way, like a scenario like we have here, or maybe a series of drag and drops, or you know, a click on the image type learning assessment. Another tip here, if you see on the bottom right, I have this previous and next buttons on these quiz questions or learning activities. I think this is a good practice for a couple reasons. One, you have to remember there are a lot of different people reviewing it generally. You know, sometimes you have a senior director or a VP who just wants to cruise through it. And then if you have this previous and next button, they can do that. And then also you have some, you know, super helpful reviewers who want to go back and forth through your learning activities, your assessments, and adding those um, previous and next buttons will allow them to do that instead of just moving forward if you don't have them. I want to finish up by just giving you two general tips, and these mostly have to do with working your, with your reviewers. So general tip number one, if your reviewers aren't super familiar with e-learning, take 30 minutes and go over your rapid prototype with them on a call. You know, this stuff is second nature to us, uh, but not to them. Tip two, don't take your prototype too seriously. You know, you've probably framed it as a prototype. You've used that language, which means reviewers won't hold back in the suggestions that they offer. I hope you found at least one of those tips helpful. If you enjoyed it, you might check out my other posts here on LinkedIn. And then I also have a course on LinkedIn Learning called Instructional Design Storyboarding right here. It's been one of my most popular courses. I've got another course coming out on LinkedIn next month called Storyline 360 Essential Training. As always, thanks for watching and my golden retriever, Pearly Girl, says Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.